Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some Linux gaming on the smallest Ryzen powered SBC that we've ever been able to get our hands on over here on the channel. This is the PC SF51 by a company known as DFI. It's powered by an AMD Ryzen embedded R2000 CPU, rather APU, four cores, eight threads, up to 3.7 gigahertz, and we've got an 8CU iGPU built in here with this APU. And as you can see, I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny. Recently, I made a video with this little board showing off the Windows performance, and overall, it's not bad, especially for emulation. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. Along with the R2000 APU, we've also got 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now, we can always add USB storage, and that's what I'm going to be running my operating system from, because, you know, these games can definitely get pretty large. But the way it sits right now, we're definitely going to need to cool this APU down. This does come with a nice little cooler, built-in fan. We can control all of this from the BIOS. Aluminum fins. We've got a copper plate here, and it fits right on the board. Definitely keeps it nice and chilly, and out of the box, this runs at around up to 15 watts. But from the BIOS, we can take this on up. I've actually gone up to 45 watts with it. And real quick, here's a rundown on the specs. So for that APU, we've got the Ryzen embedded R2514. It's based on Zen Plus. Four cores, eight threads. Got a base clock of 2.1, but all cores can boost up to 3.7, especially at this higher wattage. Eight gigabytes of onboard LP DDR4 RAM. Radeon iGPU with eight CUs based on Vega, and it does go up to 1200 megahertz. And in this video, we're not gonna be running Windows. We're gonna be running a Linux distro. And I would have loved to install just kind of a stock SteamOS 3 on this from Valve, but unfortunately they haven't released any other image except for the Steam Deck. And there are developers out there who have taken the Steam Deck image and kind of reworked it so it would work on other systems like Hollow ISO, but for this, I actually decided to use Chimera OS. I've done several videos on this, and it's got everything that I want in a Linux gaming distro. It's got the same Steam Deck UI, performance overlay, we've got access to system-wide FSR, but we have a lot more built in, like a TDP control. There's also a desktop interface that we can access, and it's being updated all the time. What I've found so far is, yeah, this is actually my go-to Linux gaming distro if I'm looking for that, you know, Steam Deck UI on basically any x86 PC or a handheld. If you're interested in learning a little more about Chimera OS, I will leave some links in the description. You can download it directly from the website. They've got a GitHub. All the information you need to know is over there. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it and test out this little board. All right, so here we are up and running and everything's actually really smooth. Uh, with the latest version of Chimera OS, we do have access to the simple Ryzen TDP controller. And from here, we can actually adjust the TDP. But uh, from the BIOS, we're able to do that on this little board. I did notice a couple little weird things here and there. My GPU clock is not showing correctly. I've tested one game so far and uh, that GPU does show it goes up to 1700 megahertz. But this is not at 1700 megahertz. This only goes up to 1200 megahertz, so keep that in mind. Uh, we may get some weird readings on the clocks, but I'd say the CPU frequencies are definitely correct here. We can go up to 3.7 gigahertz. And uh, real quick, let me show you this. Chimera OS. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen embedded R2514, four cores, eight threads, up to 3.7. It's got that base of 2.1. And out of the box, this little board was set up with two gigs dedicated to VRAM, but this is going to allocate more if we need it. But yeah, even the uh, iGPU here is working. It's Vega 8, so I'm not sure what kind of performance we're going to see out of it. But it's still pretty fun to try and see what will happen with this little board. Now, I don't think we're going to have a great time with uh, games like Cyberpunk or even Horizon Zero Dawn due to the fact that we've only got 8 gigs of RAM. Some of this stuff just won't start up because, you know, we just don't have enough RAM. But there are games here that we can actually run at full speed. With this, we also have access to the performance overlay. We can set up a frame rate limit, uh, system-wide FSR, half rate shading. Basically, everything that works with the Steam Deck will work here, except for the manual GPU clock control and TDP control from the performance overlay. That's because it's tailored towards the Steam Deck and it'll only go up to 15 watts. And in order to get really good performance out of this board, I did need to take it up to 45 watts from the BIOS. And the cooler we strapped on this does keep it nice and chilly, but that fan is always on. But now I think it's time to get into some gaming here. We're going to start out light with Cuphead. And it looks like my performance overlay just shut off. 
This is a bug that I've been running into with this little board. Every once in a while, it'll turn off, and I gotta disable it, then re-enable it. Let's get into some gameplay first. So obviously, Cuphead isn't a super hard game to run, and I expected we'd get really good performance out of this. Uh, the resolution is set to 1080 right now, but I don't think we have uh, resolution control from the game itself. Just a nice little indie game, and yeah, a lot of that stuff is gonna run at full speed on this, no problem at all. So I think we should take it up to a 3D game. Now, uh, again, this is going to be an easier one to run, and we'll move our way up. Here's Left 4 Dead 2, 1080p, medium settings, running at a constant 60. And I could have unlocked the frame rate, but I do notice a little more stuttering when it's trying to go over, kind of overrunning itself there with that iGPU. So locking them down at 60 if the games will run there is the way I like to run them on this little board. So the way it looks right now, you know, these older games are going to be able to run at full speed. Here's uh, Dirt 3, another one of my favorite older games. Medium settings, 900p. It looks like 900p is going to be kind of a sweet spot here. And of course, there's a lot of newer AAA games that I'd like to test on this, but unfortunately, we're kind of limited by the RAM. This is non-user upgradable, and we've only got 8 gigs. I've run into an issue with, let's say, Street Fighter 6, where it just won't start up. It'll go black screen. Get a major warning before I start up Horizon Zero Dawn, stating that we just don't have enough VRAM to run this, and as soon as I start it, I can get to the main menu, but then it kind of crashes on me, goes right back to the uh, Steam Deck UI. Really, nothing I can do here because I can't add more RAM to this board, but I do have a few more games that I wanted to test. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with the performance that this little board can put out, especially at those higher TDPs, but we are a bit limited when it comes to gaming, given that we've only got 8 gigs of RAM here. And a lot of that onboard RAM is going to be used as VRAM, so we're very limited here. It would be nice if they made a board like this with 16 gigs of RAM, but you know, the way it sits, given its form factor and everything like that, I do think it's a really great performing single board computer. If you're interested in checking out what this thing can do with Windows 11 installed, I'll leave a link to that video down below. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this Ryzen-powered single board computer, let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.